Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Um, I had a lot of people comment back to me on the last course of video saying why replace the engine when you've got an engine and you could just take that one apart to find out what's wrong with it. And you know what? That's exactly what we're going to do. So with no messing around, let's strip that engine. Is it because I said no messing around? I just heard a pop when I went to pull the door handle <laughs> and now I can't get out of the car. Oh God. Good job I haven't disconnected the battery yet. Let's have a crack at the old outside one. All that work. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll just add you onto my job list. <sighs> right, now onto the engine. Right, so first thing that we're going to do is drain out the coolant. We only have a little bit of coolant left in here. On these courses, it's quite a good design. Uh, just down there, I don't know if you can see, there's a little um, horse like bleed screw. You can just undo that and that will drain from the bottom of the radiator. So let's get all that drained out first. So, actually it's 13 mil on this, hopefully, I've got my hands completely covered in coolant, oh god, that's tight. as well. Many hours later. There we go. Right, let that empty out. While that's doing that, get you set up on the tripod and then we'll start taking some of the other stuff off. Right, so coolant's pretty much drained out. I'm going to leave the cap just loose on there. And we'll tighten up that drain at the bottom in a little bit. So I think we'll start off on this side and get everything disconnected. So it's just a case of unclipping all the sensors and the wires and everything else. We've obviously already taken off the top of the airbox because we did that in the last episode. So apparently to get this off, yeah, it is just literally a case of pull. And then looks like we've got a T20 Torx on there. So I'll grab that. I don't lose any of the bolts. The ones that are kept loose, I'm going to put into sandwich bags and label them. So that's a good trick to get some little IKEA. Or oh, IKEA, it have to be IKEA. The other brands exist. Let's get a load of sandwich bags. Uh, and basically, where you can't put the screws back in, just chuck them in a bag and label them. So it's one air box. So the loom is pretty much free, so I'm just going to tuck it down here, out of the way. Uh, so the next thing, we'll take off this pipe work down here from the throttle body. So that'll be the next thing that comes off. Well, it's 
oldest Jubilee clip by the looks of it. Just getting that uh, throttle body pipe work off there, just one Jubilee clip. Releasing the clips on the cover that goes over the left hand side of the rocker cover containing some of the wiring loom. And then just connecting, just connecting, just disconnecting all the sensors. Moving around to the back and removing any of the electrical connections there that we can. The aim on this is to basically just push all of that electrical wiring down to the back of the engine so we've got more access to work on. Moving on to the fuel rail and disconnecting the injectors. Now on this, be careful, on the injector connectors there's like a little red rubber grommet that sits into each one. So two of mine fell out, so I am just reinserted those, you see me doing that there. Then move on to the coil pack rail, so it's one big connector on the right hand side. And then you've got two uh, T30 Torx bits, I think they are on the top. Just loosen those off and then pull it up straight and it just pops out. Putting the bolts back into the rail so we don't get anything lost. The next thing I'm pointing out is the uh, exhaust manifold is very rusty. So in a second you'll see me lubricating up all the bolts and the nuts just to try and give that the best chance to soak for a little while before we move on to that. Then I move on to the uh, thermostat housing. So when I took this off I was actually quite surprised the thermostat looks pretty much brand new. So whether somebody's had that change recently I don't know but looking at it pending it being tested I think we can reuse that again and again that was just three bolts holding that in place. Putting the bolts back into the uh, engine head where I removed them from the uh, water uh, the water pump through the thermostat housing just so they were back in place there now we move on to the right hand side of the engine and this is where i probably spent most of my time um the jubilee clips or the the metal clips that hold all the pipe work onto the manifold on the side there that pumps all the coolant through the engine bay they were i think the originals and they basically welded themselves to the rubber pipe work through all the heat that's gone through them um, I don't have the special tool to remove them so I literally had to in a lot of cases kind of just persevere with the tools that I had. Uh, I found using two sets of pliers on each clip seemed to work the best and on some of them where they were, well the pipework on the left hand side of the engine was actually quite badly damaged because um, it had been on there since I'm guessing the car was built. So I ended up cutting some of the pipework but they're only small pipes and we can easily replace those where necessary. Just disconnecting the reservoir there and getting all the pipe work out of the right hand side of the engine. Removing any of the little brackets which were in the way. Uh, one thing I did find is on the majority of these areas you have to work on, they seem to have random little brackets which seem to always be directly over where you need to access the clips. On the front there, removing another one of the little brackets just so I can get the right angle on that last main pipe that's going into um, the housing that pumps all the coolant through to the engine head. And there we go, just using two sets of pliers on there to try and pull that off. And in the end, yeah, again with this clip, could not get it off, so pretty much had to butcher it, but it's only a Jubilee clip, only a couple of, well, a couple of quid, a couple of pence to replace those, putting them back on the car at a later date. So I think in all that probably took me the best part of half an hour to get that pipe work off the right hand side. Now just removing the plastic housing and pushing everything back out the way. Then where do we go to next? Oh yes, yeah, so now I moved on to disconnecting the fuel rail. So there's a little plastic clip on the pipe that goes into the top of the fuel rail. Put a rag underneath it, pull that off and then any of the excess fuel that's in the pipe will then just drop onto the rag that clip basically seals itself from what I can see so as soon as you take it off you're not going to have a continuous flow of petrol coming out it seems to just sort of stop itself then moving on to the throttle body removing the bolts attached to that so there's four bolts on the throttle body and again you can see how corroded that was in there with that out of the way 
push the cables back again and then we start to work on removing the fuel rail itself with the injectors still connected again 220 volts 220 torx box i think it was just connected onto that one tip the excess fuel out of the rail into the same rag removing some more of the clips from the back of the intake manifold just so we can get access and there were eight bolts if I remember correctly two on the outside and then we had um, six on the inside of the uh, actual manifold that holds it onto the engine head couldn't get it out at that point because the rocker cover was in the way so removing the rocker cover and then the easiest way I found to remove this was just to rotate it around 180 degrees and that intake just lifted out Okay, so we're back. It's the next day. Um, I was having some issues with uh, car noise. Um, having some issues with camera batteries yesterday. Um, <clears throat> can't quite remember where we left off, but let's just do a recap. So we've removed the rocker cover. We've removed the thermostat housing. All the pipework from this side of the engine's gone. Um, I've taken out. This is to remind me where I left off. But basically, that's a bolt from the alternator. I've cut the serpentine belt, I think it's called, or the auxiliary belt, because we're going to replace that anyway. Down there, we have our nice new shiny starter motor, um, and I've just got one bolt to take off for the earth on the bottom of the alternator down there. Um, next step is going to be removing the housing that covers so we can get the tensioner off um, and get the chain off because that's basically holding us in place at the moment. So we need to get that chain off um, to allow us to lift the head out of position. These bolts here on the um, exhaust manifold are really badly corroded. I tried getting a socket on there but it just started to round so I stopped straight away. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to disconnect. There's three bolts on the bottom of the uh, cap down there. <clears throat> I'm going to undo those so that when we take the head off we'll lift the exhaust manifold hopefully <coughs> sorry hopefully at the same time um, and then literally we'll be able to examine it and one, when this is off I'll have better access to then do something with these bolts or even pull the studs from the block uh, sorry from the head um, <clears throat> as we're leaving the block in place I'm not going to do anything with removing the drive shaft but we do need to get access to the bottom of the casing down here and the way that they design it is you actually have to remove the engine mount so the next step is going to be taking off that wheel and then after I've got the wheel off I'll have access to the bottom um, and then what we'll do is we'll put the car onto an axle stand and then we'll jack the engine up from underneath with a block of wood and the flat jack there um, to basically just support it so we can take this off so let's crack on and get that done all right so with the wheel off we can now get access to the inspection panel which is not a T30 Torx Okay, so if you can see from that angle, but now we have access to the bottom of the uh, engine so we can get to this pulley, and we just need to get the rest of the belt off it because the tensioner is holding it in place. So I'm going to lower you down um, so you can see that. Right, so there we go. So you can see that's what we need to get access to. So on this panel, you had two screws up here. There's one underneath um, and then one over here as well, just holding that inspection panel um, in place. Quite rare, actually, because a lot of the times when they have work done on these cars, some mechanics don't bother putting their panels back in. So that was a bit of luck.
Right, so I've removed the tensioner bolt here to loosen that off just because the spring goes directly across the front of the um, alternator bolt there which I need to get access to so we can get that off now. So with the tensioner spring out of the way I now had access to the E12 bolt that was on the bottom of the alternator just removing that there and then it was pretty much rigid in place so just use the back of a uh, hammer just to kind of give it a bit of leverage apologies for the camera didn't want to sit still for that bit so that's the alternator out now i've got the alternator out and just removing the sensors at the end of the cam and i'm putting those into individual bags i've already labeled them front and rear so that when we go to reinstall everything goes back where it should be and now we have access to remove the engine mount so there's three uh, e14 bolts that go into the chassis <clears throat> which is the uh, mount closest to the bottom of the screen and then you've got two larger I think they were E18 or E20 bolts um, that basically go into the main bracket which connects between the engine mount and the block on the engine itself get those out of the way and then you've got three long bolts which go from the engine mount into the block now this is where you have to manipulate the engine so moving it up and down to give yourself access i'm not sure if i show you here in the video just how long those bolts are you should be able to see in a second but the whole design of it is just trying to get access to get a spanner on there initially was difficult but then pulling the bolts out was even harder so if we see in a second lowering it down to get access to the lower bolt we should get access through from the inspection hatch that we've done in the footwell as the footwell in the in the uh, wheel arch taking that out just doing a slight more adjustment on there to get the right angle on it moving the last bolt from the top and there we go the mount is now free I couldn't quite angle it out at this point but now I had access to the bolts on the upper pulley took those off and then managed to kind of manipulate that bracket out towards the back of the engine bay. Now I moved on to the water pump. Now a good tip on here is there's multiple bolts that go into the head uh, which connect the water pump on there and they have varying different lengths. So what I've done is I've got my new water pump on the top of the engine there and I'm just moving each bolt as I remove it and housing it into the correct hole it needs to be in on the new pump. Old pump lumped in good condition, no noise on the bearings, but if we're taking it off and we've gone this far, we may as well put a new one on. I think I got one for about £30, which is a good price. After that cover's been removed, then I moved on to removing the tensioner for the chain, and now I'm removing the, uh, the chain guides. Two plastic guides either side of the chain, and then removing the oil feed, which feeds oil to the chain at the top of the engine. Took the lower sprocket off, removed the chain, and then just putting any bolts back into position which we can to keep reference. Now I moved on to removing the cams. So for the cams, because these could be under some form of tension, I just went around and cracked off each of the bolts. Uh, I think I did about a quarter turn on each and then just went back and repeated until they're all finger tight and I can just loosen those off. Again, making note of each of the um, bolts into separate bags and on the cam holders that go over the top of the cam to keep it in place they've actually got numbers on there so you're working in odd numbers across the bottom cam and even numbers across the top cam again putting those into individual bags so we don't get them lost and then carefully removing and wrapping and sealing each of the cams labeling them as i go along so i know which one's the exhaust and which one is the inlet cam now I'm removing the uh, rockers from the top and we can now move on to loosening off the head bolts. Now with regards to the head bolts you want to remove those uh, in a spiral pattern. Uh, when I looked online it said to tighten them you tighten from the centre of the engine working yourself out in a spiral clockwise so all I did for the removal is go around and just crack each one of them off a quarter turn counterclockwise starting at the outside um, top left bolt and then working my way into the center this took about three or four repetitions before each one seemed to feel a lot looser and you want to do this because 
one you don't want to strain any individual bolt but also when you're removing it you want to remove that head as cleanly and as straightly as possible so there we are loosening them all off not taking the bolts out just leaving them in place and on to the next bit right i think that's enough for today because my lower back is absolutely caning after leaning over this but let's just recap um and go from there so i've put the um cover back on for the timing chain and i've put the engine mount back on just so i can get the jack out from underneath the car tonight loosened off all of the head bolts so that's all been done i did that in like a spiral sequence um I have been defeated so I knew these were going to be a pain um, I tried to take the exhaust off from the bottom and all the studs on there are completely rusted and are hard to get to and for some reason the cat seems to also be bolted uh, to the bottom of the block and you can't get to those bolts which is a really great idea um, okay so uh, yeah so head is pretty much ready to go I've just got to get the bolts that are in here off so I had my nut remover tool which has taken off most of them but these last three will not come out so I'll have to come up with a solution for that uh, let's just recap what we've taken off so I need to tidy up a couple of bolts and put them into bags so we've got all the pulley wheel water pump we've got a new one of those timing chain the guides and the oil feeds that basically feeds oil onto the chain to keep it lubricated when the car's going i've got the uh cam um uh, holders there and they're all labeled up for the front and rear the front ones all had the number of each cam scratched into them but the rear ones were a little bit hard to read so i have to have another look at that um and then another huge pile of bits down there so I'm going to tidy all this up, get it into a box, get that wheel back on, lower the car back down off the um, the uh, axle stand, um, and just have a general tidy up. Really, I mean, tomorrow uh, I might get a chance to do it, but it is going to be Mother's Day tomorrow, so um, we're due to be out with the family. So I have to see how much time I have, but I need to come up with a solution to get these last three studs or nuts out because these are rusted to, to death. As soon as that's off, we can lift up the head and we can find out what's underneath. So I think that's probably the best place to leave it for this episode. I do want to say thank you to everyone who's been watching. I um, don't know how this is going to edit out because I've got to now put all the footage together and I filled up the memory stick doing this. But yeah, thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. It's free to do so. It massively helps the channel um, and helps us grow. We're just shy of a thousand uh, subscribers at the moment. So to get past a thousand after this video goes out would be fantastic. So hope you all have a really good day um, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.